Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine. Your Excellency, Ambassador Julian Smith, first of all, thank you very much for giving us this interview for our audience. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. In the, co- in the context of war in Ukraine, which seems to continue in the next months, please uh, tell us, if you can, which are the clear requests of NATO for Romania regarding the military support for our neighbor. Well, first of all, let me step back and say how much we value Romania's involvement in supporting the Ukrainian people, uh, given what's happening on the ground right now with the war inside Ukraine. All of the allies have come together here at NATO headquarters since February 24th to look for ways that they can support Ukraine. That assistance takes many forms. We leave it to each individual country to determine how they want to support the people of Ukraine. Some opt for humanitarian and economic assistance, others provide security assistance, some provide all forms of assistance. Romania has played an indispensable role in facilitating the the transfer of over 2.5 million refugees that have come through Romania. We are very grateful for that support. Romania is also providing indispensable humanitarian support. And of course, Romania has played a key role as it relates to to the facilitation of grain that's moving from Ukraine to various ports around the world. So we're grateful for Romania's cooperation. They've been a strong supporter of NATO's efforts here to support Ukraine, and we'll look forward to working with them in the weeks and months ahead. I'm not sure, but Romania seems to have some problems with uh his capacity of defending by itself alone until the NATO uh, support would be deployed in case of emergency. Probably you know that uh, we don't have uh, naval vessels. Um, How do you appreciate the capacity of Romania to defend alone by at least for five days, judging by uh, air defense capabilities and uh, naval capabilities? Romania doesn't have any new military vessels. And recently, the Secretary of State in the Romanian Ministry of Defense, Simona Kojokaru, spoke spoke about the need of strengthening NATO integrated air uh, and anti-missile defense system. Does uh, USA or uh, maybe other member of NATO intend to send in uh, in Romania anti-missile defense system, accepting the, the system which Romania already brought from uh, your country, I mean, Patriot systems, and accept the friends already sent to Romania which, uh, with his troops? Well, let me say a couple of things. First, I would note that Romania is a country inside the NATO alliance that actually has met its defense spending target. Allies are supposed to aim to spend 2% of GDP on their national defense, and Romania has met that target, and we are very appreciative of the fact that Romania has done so. We've also noted that Romania has committed to spend more on defense. Romania is talking about stretching to 2.5% of GDP in the years ahead, and we applaud those efforts as well and look forward to working with Romanian counterparts on determining how some of those extra resources can be applied. Secondly, I would say that after February 24th, all the NATO allies came together to try and determine better ways in which we could reinforce the eastern flank. And you'll remember after Russia went into Crimea in 2014, we established four multinational battalions in the three Baltic states and Poland. But after Russia went back into Ukraine this year, we doubled the number of multinational battalions. We now have a multinational battalion that's being set up in Romania. We have French forces there, as you noted. There is also an American presence uh, on the ground inside Romania. And those forces are meant to be scalable to a brigade level in the face of any potential crisis. So we've taken many, many steps since NATO Madrid summit earlier this summer, and we'll continue to assess the needs of our allies on the eastern flank to make sure that their legitimate security concerns are being adequately addressed. Which are the needs now here in this part of the region 
of, of NATO? Well, it varies, and it's hard to give one specific example for each NATO ally that would be applicable. We have allies on the eastern flank that have fabulous ground forces. Some have a tremendous air force. Some do have maritime capabilities. But what SACUR is doing in cooperation with each country's Ministry of Defense is to first and foremost conduct an assessment of what is on hand in each individual allies case, and then determine how NATO allies can supplement those capabilities and strengthen those capabilities. So it really varies. We've seen NATO allies send land forces into Eastern Europe, air forces in some cases, and naval forces. And that will be an ongoing process that we'll continue to work on uh, as we march towards next summer's summit in Vilnius. So can we talk a little bit about Black Sea? Because in Romania, the contract for the acquisition of military vessels, which Romania intended to sign with Naval Group from France, is blocked for many, many years. Because of Montreux Convention, in time of war, the military vessels of uh, non-river NATO states cannot enter and stay in, in Black Sea. So we all know that part of the Black Sea is occupied by Russia now. There are any possibility that United States or other country to sell immediately or done it uh, in case of emergency to Romania some military vessels uh, for a better protection in this part of the NATO? Well, you're right. While the war is raging right now, it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to access the Black Sea. And that is a direct consequence of Russia's aggression inside Ukraine. All that said, the Black Sea remains an area of focus. I think it's important that we're having the foreign ministers of all NATO countries come to Bucharest for the next foreign ministerial. We're all looking forward to traveling to Romania. The Black Sea will continue to be an area area of focus for us. We'll continue to assess those maritime security needs that you outlined. I don't have any breaking news to share today, but I know that this is a focus for SACUR and for the alliance more broadly, including the Secretary General. Um, Romania has already a NATO uh, battle group. You, you already said this, which can be extended to a, a brigade level. Uh, it's not ready yet. And my question is if you are satisfied of uh, how it's going this process. I think it's been going very well. I've been impressed by the speed with which allies were able to move forces into Eastern Europe around February 24th, particularly the United States was able to move forces within a day uh, to the region in light of what was happening inside Ukraine. We learned some very important lessons in the wake of Russia's invasion of Crimea. And by that, I mean that for the US military, what we did is we pre-positioned more equipment, more enablers um, and munitions in the region so that if we had a requirement to surge, we could seize on that and move those forces rapidly. And that's exactly what we did in the wake of the start of the war inside Ukraine. I think you're going to see allies looking more closely at that model, putting more enablers and pre-positioned equipment into Eastern Europe. I'm confident that we're on the right track. And I think the work that's ongoing to establish our regional plans and let that direct capability development and posture decisions is all on track. There are former military chiefs, including from uh, USA, who said many times that Romania has problems with the old infrastructure, old bridges, old roads. And because of this, there are uh, technical difficulties in moving some US or NATO heavy capabilities here. Did you discuss about this with Romanian authorities, maybe with the Minister of Defense or with the government? Well, this is a topic of conversation, actually, that's been part of uh, the dialogue both here at NATO headquarters and I would note inside the European Union for many years now. In the wake of the attempted annexation of Crimea in 2014, all allies took a fresh look at their ability to quickly move forces from Western Europe into Eastern Europe. And by doing that, I think we did realize that in some cases there were 
some challenges, either in outdated bridges or rail lines that needed updating. So this has been a really interesting area of work. We call it mobility is kind of the framework for that. Military mobility has been a key feature of cooperation between the European Union and NATO and will continue to be a key feature of our work here. But I'm not um, concerned to the point where I think it prohibits allies from supporting allies in a crisis. I think it's a challenge that merits our attention, but I wouldn't describe it as prohibitive in any serious way. Do you have any advice for the Romanian authorities? Well, I think our advice for allies across the alliance are uh, as follows. One, we have to continue to stand united in supporting Ukraine. We have to continue to invest in our own national defense. And again, Romania has done that time and time again. We have to build resilience and also develop new capabilities in new areas for future challenges. And by that, I mean issues like cyber or space. And we we have to look at the fundamentals, as you noted, of the importance of being able to flow forces quickly into these countries in the face of a crisis. So we'll continue to stay in close contact with our Romanian counterparts. Romania is a strong, capable ally, and I know our bilateral relationship will continue to serve us well in that regard. Would you recommend preparing the Romanian population for a military conflict and also for preparing to, to contracurate the propaganda, the Russian propaganda here in this part of the Europe and especially in Romania? Well, you're right to raise disinformation and misinformation. This is a familiar tool in the Russian toolkit. They love to put out falsehoods and baseless claims, either about the alliance or about individual allies, such as the United States or Romania. We've gotten better at countering those falsehoods, at putting out the facts and challenging those falsehoods. We've done a lot here inside the alliance to share intelligence, which has been a key part of our strategy in bringing the alliance together and making sure we have a common sight picture. Uh, so we'll continue to work on disinformation. It's one of the hybrid tactics that the Russians like to rely on, but we will do everything we can to continue to build capacity to counter those hybrid tactics. Your Excellency Ambassador Julian Smith, thank you very, very much for this interview. Thank you. Appreciate it. Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine.